So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Sandra Cortesi. I'm the director of the Youth and Media Project at the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society. Uh, I will be the MC for this afternoon. That's why you're seeing me first. Uh, I'm the one that is going to try to move us along through the afternoon. My Swiss side in me is going to make sure we hopefully do that on time. So you see it, we start right on time, uh, 1 p.m. Um, so with that, I would like to welcome uh, Carlos Afonso, the co-director uh, here at the ITS, dear colleague and friend, ITS, the co-host uh, of today's symposium or the next symposium over the next three days. Um, more than that, hopefully I don't need to say about Carlos because probably you know most people actually in this room. So welcome, Carlos. So thanks, Sandra. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's like nothing short of amazing to, to see you all together uh, here in the same room for us to, to have uh, those three days for us to discuss uh, issues around uh, AI and inclusion. I, I couldn't be more happy than that. And I think that's going to be certainly a very, very uh, important and fun experience for us uh, in terms of in, uh, interchange and exchange on topics regarding AI and inclusion. So when I was thinking about like what to say in this morning, I thought like, uh, hey, probably going to give you guys like a welcome to the cloudy city of Rio, but looks like the sun is shining right now. So it looks like I'm entitled to give you a warm welcome to our beautiful city of Rio. We're really happy to have to have you all here. So this is uh, thank you for all of you who have uh, traveled from uh, nearby cities like Belo Horizonte and São Paulo, and those of you who have come from faraway cities like uh, Seoul, Beijing, Barra da Tijuca. It's great to to have you down here uh, with us uh, right in the start of of our event. I would like just to say, like first and foremost, that it's a really, really uh, a pleasure to do these events, to organize these events together with the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University. It's really a pleasure to organize these events on behalf uh, of the global network of internet and, and society research centers. And uh, we are really, really uh, glad that you all guys make it for us to, to, to have those three days uh, to continue this conversation on AI and inclusion. So let me just say some, uh, I'll be very, very brief, but let me say some thank yous. So I really have to say thank you, like first and foremost, to, to, our, to our sponsors. And uh, well, talking about our sponsors, certainly the ethics and governance of uh, AI fund was fundamental to make this event uh, happen. So generously supported so much of these of these events, and at the same time, I need to say thank you uh, for the the IDRC and to OSF uh, who had done so much to bring you a good chunk of you guys down here to the event as well. So this is just like a big thank you to to our sponsors. And of course, to the Museum of Tomorrow as well, because uh, I think you guys have already seen how the Museum of Tomorrow is such the perfect venue for an event like this one to happen, to make possible that this exchange of ideas will end up flourishing. So the Museum of Tomorrow has been a great partner in the organization of the events. Uh, and just to mention that the, the director of the Museum of Tomorrow is here with us, uh, Mr. Ricardo Piquet. And it's really, really glad to count on support of Marcela, Luis Alberto, in making this event possible. So thanks, big thanks to, to the museum. So if I can just very, very briefly uh, go with you about what we have in store for those three days. So today we're having uh, a short uh, session to begin with that will lead us into a plenary session that will help us to get into a common understanding on AI and inclusion. So we have our, we're having our two keynotes that will lead us to this conceptual understanding around uh, AI and inclusion 
On day two, we're going to do some deep dives and doing some case studies and focusing on topics such as business models, data and infrastructure, algorithms and, and designs. And on day three, we will actually work on uh, action and impact research and see what can we do together out of those three days that we are being here doing this discussion. And just to, just to conclude, let me just tell you this, that when we talk about AI and inclusion, it's, it's really easy for us to think only on the challenges and maybe lose some sight of the opportunities. So it's really important for us to take these events and to take this moment to try to not only overcome the challenges that are put by artificial intelligence, but to also see how can we take the most, how we can take the best of the opportunities, and especially focusing on inclusion. Inclusion is a very unique lens that grants us access to a quite different way to understand issues concerning AI. And the fact that we are doing these events in Brazil, it's even better. If you just go across the, this, uh, this hall and go to the exhibition uh, venue that you have just um, across the lounge, you see there is a special exhibition in the museum that talks about innovation in Brazil and begins with this word, word in Tupi Guarani language, which is an indigenous language that says Piahu Asu, which is grandes novidades, great news in Tupi Guarani language. And I think it's really remarkable for us to understand that we do not, do not want only to have uh, developing countries importing technologies and importing understandings on AI, but we want them to become protagonists on the agenda and the development of technology and development of AI. So guys, this is just to say that it's a great pleasure to have you all here. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about who else is in the room, because I'm quite not sure if you know everyone around. So take a look in your bag for the program, take a look in the website, aiandinclusionsymposium.com, uh, and there we're trying to see who else is in the room and who else can we include in this conversation. Let us just remind ourselves that those are trying times. And in those times, we are here in those three days to discuss some thorny issues. So let's do this exercise to include each other in the conversation, to make sure that we have a safe place here for us to, to take these discussions uh, further. And then again, uh, we're really, really super happy to, to have you all here. So with that, I would like to invite uh, two people on the stage to, to give some, some more remarks uh, from you. So first, I would like to call Luis Alberto uh, from the Museum of Tomorrow. So Luis, if you can come to the stage. Uh, and let me call Felipe Steven from Omidia Foundation as well. So Felipe, where are you? If you're uh, okay, so uh, as we wait for Felipe Luis, if you want to give some introductory remarks, and thanks very much for having okay. us here. Thank, Thank you, you, Carlos, very much. Good afternoon to you all. Please be welcome to the Museum of Tomorrow. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to salute your presence here, and also to honor the, the absence of those who are not here anymore. Uh, the indigenous people used to run these shores, Brazilians before there was Brazil, Cariocas before there was the city of Rio, harbor inhabitants before there was a harbor. Our ancestors of the Tupinambá, Tupiniquim, Teniminó, and Tamoyo tribes. We are their future. Well, the Museum of Tomorrow is a science museum. In fact, it's an applied science museum. The proposal of the museum is to apply the resources of contemporary sciences to offer to a visitors a journey of exploration of possible future scenarios so they can reflect upon the actions that we take in today will lead to this or that other possible future configuration. In fact, the main philosophical basis of the museum is that tomorrow is not a date in the calendar, tomorrow is not ready, waiting for us, Tomorrow will be a construction, and we will all take part in this construction as people, as citizens, as members of the human civilization. 
So we want uh, 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 the, our visitors to explore this collection of possibilities based on, on the best science available. And we set up a journey of uh, built upon five great questions that mankind has always asked itself. Where do we come from? Who are we? Where are we? Where are we heading to? How do you want to go? Which values do you want to convey to the future? So since from the very beginning of the inception of the museum, we came to realize that this sort of experience, we are an experiential museum, <clears throat> uh, uh, cannot be uh, offered without involving this experience into values. So we positively affirm the humanist values of supporting knowledge, freedom, tolerance, and joy. So this is what we actually want to convey to our visitors as they proceed in their exploration of the choices that are open today to build this or that possible future scenario. And in this sense, it's very natural, it's congenial for us to receive a sort of symposium joining the foremost frontier of exploring technology, ways of technology change the world, changing our society, and the aspect of inclusion, how we want to change ourselves. Sustainability and conviviality are the ethical guidelines of the museum. How do you want to live with each other? How do you want to live with the world? So we are here, I think, to, give, to make another step, a small but a giant leap, towards this common future that we all want to build. Thank you very much for being here. So thank you, Carlos and Luis Alberto. Uh, since Felipe is not yet here, he's a little bit running late, too much traffic always in Rio. Uh, I'm gonna start with the logistics uh, for the day and the next, the coming days, and then we see if he arrives by then, otherwise we continue. I promise to keep it short, but uh, it's always the same with big events of this size, there are logistics involved. Um, so bear with me, there are quite a few, so. Okay, so first and for foremost, uh, this event is going to be on the record. Uh, so keep in mind when you say things uh, and when you frame things, it's going to be on the record. Second, we're going to take a lot of pictures, as always with big events. Uh, if you prefer to stay out of pictures, there are two ways of how you can do that. One is we have assigned seats at the top of the room because we're also taking pictures like this, so we had to position it over there. And uh, for your name tag, outside in the help desk, you're going to get a special ninja sticker uh, to make sure that we recognize that you prefer not to be on pictures. Okay. Number three, um, as you see, we are coming here from many, many different cultures, cultural backgrounds, lots of accents like mine. Uh, so be mindful, respectful uh, with people uh, in the room. Then some ground rules. First, when, if you get the mic, please be very brief, but please introduce yourself so we get to know each other uh, better. Second, um, please always be on time. I promise I will remind you today many, many times. T tomorrow there are some Brazilian influence in there, so be also <laughs> on time tomorrow. Um, we are going to do a lot of interactive activities where, where our aim is to really break this room also up. Uh, it's not our preferred setting that it's an auditorium. Usually those who have come to our events know it's a lot of moving and big tables and activities. So be prepared for that. I will in a second also introduce the teal bags you have in front of you. Uh, also, under your seats, if you're not cheating in that row at the top, or if you're sitting in one of those, there are outlets, so if you need to charge your phone or your laptop, it's under the seat. Housekeeping rules, bathrooms are outside. Luckily, it's very well signaled. Uh, in case of an emergency, there's an info desk outside. Uh, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us uh, if something happens. Uh, and then if you have a food emergency, hopefully we will all feed you really well, but there is also a restaurant uh, in case of a food emergency. And then last but not least, uh, I highly recommend you to visit the museum and explore it. Uh, the designated time for it would be tomorrow and Friday from 1.15 to 1.45. I think we will keep announcing that, but keep it in mind. Basically, over lunch the next few days, you can also see the, and explore the museum. 
I think that's it, unless Urs thinks I have something else. No, he promised he will make me signals if I forgot something. Um, so with that, Felipe probably not here yet. So I will then uh, ask on stage one of my very, very dear colleagues and friends, uh, friend Ronaldo Lemos, also a co-director at ITS. Um, Ronaldo and I are gonna start the opening session uh, and we are super, super grateful that all of you, almost all of you, filled out this survey. Uh, apologies that it was very long. But based on that survey, we have a surprise for you, which I think Ronaldo is going to quickly introduce. And then we are going to use some of that information to also start giving you an impression for who is in the room, what kind of initiatives, where are people coming from. Um, so, yes. Excellent. So, it's really great to have you all here in Brazil. I am Ronaldo Lemos, as you know. I'm one of the uh, directors of ITS, the Institute of Technology and Society, which is one of the hosts uh, of the event. So one of the goals that we have here is actually to get everyone to know each other as best as we can. So in order to make that goal possible, we have run this research beforehand that quite a few of you actually have uh, answered to, and we are glad for that. And we would like to show uh, you a little bit of the results of that research, uh, so that you can have an idea of who is in the room and who you can expect uh, to meet uh, throughout uh, these uh, days. So, uh, also, we are going to have a few colleagues here with us as an introductory section. Uh, and in this introduction, uh, we would like to show you a little bit of the feel that we want to have throughout the entire event so that we can share as much uh, of our experiences uh, and learn from each other. So, do we have it up already? Usually I call it the okay. bubbles magic. Technically it's called dot plot. Uh, it's an open access, open source project uh, developed initially by the Berkman Klein Center. You're all welcome to use it for your own conferences to make a little mm -hmm. bit of advertisement. Um, but we're, yes. So basically each of one of these dots is one person, so you can have like a, a good feel of who is coming from Asia, Europe, Latin America, and then the Caribbean. Oceania, uh, Northern America, Northern Africa, and Sub-Saharan Africa. And I think this is really amazing because as you can see, this is a very diverse conference. And actually I wonder if there are many other conferences that have reached a level of diversity as the one we have. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see this, no? Yes, absolutely. This is really exciting. And you can actually click in each one of these dots because that's a person and you can see who the person is. So, so it's if really you're great. really curious to see what, who is the one person from Oceania. <laughs> yeah, from Oceania. Who is Technically, that? Technically, you yeah. can click on it. I don't know. We didn't prepare our tech. See, it actually works. Uh, and so you can click on the person and then you can scroll and see all kinds of contact yeah. information for the person and it's so Julian forth. Thomas, by the way, is, is he around like uh, a... Unfortunately, he had a... He hasn't arrived uh, from no, Oceania yet. he had a yet. family yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. issue, uh, but he really wanted to come. And what, what we can see here is obviously a lot of people from Latin America, um, but really a big, big chunk of people that traveled from far uh, to get here. All right, I think, can we scroll down a little bit more? Yep, okay. So uh, this is the, the primary stakeholder perspective uh, of each organization. As you see, uh, there's a lot of people coming from the academia. Uh, this is an academic conference, so that's expected. Uh, but uh, it's important because this is also an event uh, that's been uh, organized by the network of centers. So it makes total sense uh, to have the academia here. Right, Sandra? Makes very much sense. Uh, I also learned that Felipe is here. So shall we maybe do it after? We do it after, okay. Um, so since we're looking at these dots, I also wonder if we scroll up again one second, uh, knowing that we have Danit here. Uh, and pass, starting to pass also the mic to people in the room that are going to share. Uh, they promised me that it's going to be no longer than two minutes to share some about the, of their experiences. Danit may be coming from Asia, 
uh, a quick introduction would be great. Thank you. It's really great to meet you. My name is Denise Gal. Maybe if you stand up, I think then people can see you almost yeah. a little bit better. Sounds good. Perfect. Hi. Uh, I'm originally from Israel, but I am based in Beijing, China. Nice, thank you. And um, I'm the chair of the outreach committee for the IEEE Global Initiative on Ethical Considerations in Intelligent and Autonomous Systems. And this is a, a new initiative that was established by IEEE, which is very known for its technology standards. And the aim is really to make sure that engineers are educated and empowered and incentivized to prioritize ethical considerations in their design of AI um, and autonomous systems. And what we've been doing so far is um, we were trying to get as many people as possible to join because the name says global, but we only had members from North America and, and the EU. So now we have members um, in China, Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, India, Iran, Israel, uh, South America. Now we're teaming up with people in Ethiopia. We have a fantastic group here in Brazil. We have people in Mexico. So we're really trying to reach out and become more inclusive. As for me, this is the most inclusive conference I've been to. So I'm really, really excited about this. Thank you for having me. And so if we slide a little bit further down to the next one. So as, as Ronaldo said, we have people from all kinds of uh, stakeholder groups here. Uh, if we slide to the next one, we see some, and you will have plenty of time to explore this, and I promise to click on all, on all the dots. Uh, but we were on the, also wondering, KS, uh, since you're also one of the people that traveled from really, really far, uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us maybe some of the Digital Asia Hub efforts and some of your other, other efforts in Asia. Thank you. Uh. My name is K.S. Park. Uh, I'm uh, speaking in place of um, Maravika uh, Jairam, the Executive Director of Digital Asia Hub. Digital Asia Hub is uh, uh, an a, a interdisciplinary uh, effort uh, of uh, organizations uh, in Asia and also, uh, on also outside Asia uh, to uh, bring together uh, academia, industry, uh, and in some parts of the civil society as well uh, to discuss uh, the uh, uh, effects of technology on the society and especially the uh, Asian uh, society. We had uh, a series of uh, uh, seminars uh, last year uh, starting with uh, uh, Hong Kong, uh, Seoul, and finally Tokyo. In Hong Kong, uh, we uh, had a uh, uh, broad talk about the recent advances made in uh, AI uh, and uh, new philosophical issues uh, and ethical issues uh, raised by uh, the new advances in the technology. Uh, we moved to Seoul and we did a deep dive uh, into the ethical issues uh, on AI. And we uh, uh, concluded with a, a Tokyo event where we talked about the economic aspect of uh, AI, um, how AI is eroding uh, the job market, and at the same time, AI is doing social good uh, for the society. So um, uh, I see uh, uh, today uh, that uh, we'll have, uh, uh, we'll build on the discussions that we had in uh, Asia and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, we will be on incrementally increasing uh, uh, learning curve here uh, 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 with all of us together. Thank you. Thank you so much. So one of the key points uh, of this event is that we are going to talk a lot about the problems and the challenges of artificial intelligence, but we also want to talk about the opportunities brought by artificial intelligence. So in that sense, I would like to ask uh, Ursula, uh, that works from uh, ITU, the International Telecommunications uh, Union. Uh, and I believe, Ursula, where are you? OK, excellent. Hi. Uh, I believe you have ro uh, hosted a big event on AI quite recently, right? So can you share a little bit of your experience uh, on that? 
Sure, I'd be delighted to. Hi, everyone. I'm Ursula Weinhoven. I'm the just recently joined ITU um, as the representative to the United Nations in New York. Really thrilled to be here and really looking forward to the next few days. As you mentioned, um, this year the ITU, together with 20 UN agency partners, hosted the AI for Good Global Summit uh, in Geneva. And I can share some of the, the relevant um, themes that kind of came out of it in a few moments. Um, this Next year we will have the next one. So we, we hope that as many of you as possible will join us there and continue the discussion around these really key questions of the opportunities as well, of course, as the, as the risks. So just a few themes um, that came out of it that I wanted to share. Um, things such as it, it was so important that uh, in, to ensure that developing countries, including least developed countries, can benefit from AI and effectively contribute to the discussions on its, on its future. The fact that marginalization of countries with low technological capabilities is a significant risk. There was um, concerns about mass unemployment and brain drain, but also the desire for populations to have a role, as was mentioned in the creation of these technologies, not just to be consumers mm -hmm. of technologies developed elsewhere. The um, idea that to benefit from AI, vast amounts of data and necessary skills to use it are required. Areas where, unfortunately, many developing countries um, currently lag behind. And very important also from the ITU's perspective, that there can be no mass digitization without universal and affordable access to broadband. And so in this context, it's really important to remember that there's 3.9 billion people who aren't yet online. Um, and there's little data available on the assets, needs and desires of the people who are most in need. And as, as we know, and this conference obviously is looking at, it, AI is likely to exacerbate existing digital divides based on factors including gender and economic inequalities. So principles of non-discrimination, transparency and accountability should be built into the operation of AI. So in terms of some of the starting points as well, because I know that was something you wanted us to mention in these um, three minutes, um, to recall that in the Sustainable Development Goals that all 193 member states agreed to at the end of 2015, there are are um, some targets that relate to the IC ICT area and also some important indicators as well. So we're really keen as well to see how they can also be a good starting point for um, some of the discussions around issues of artificial intelligence and, and inclusion. And we're particularly interested around the issue of gender equality. So if anyone's working on that, I would love to talk with you and see how we can collaborate as well. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much. Also, uh, in addition, I would like to uh, hand the microphone to Marqueta. Uh, where are you? Yes. And Marqueta, you are with the, the Canadian Inclusion Lab, right? Yes. So what are your perspectives uh, on the opportunities and challenges that we have ahead regarding AI? <laughs> Easy question. Yes. So, so the Digital Inclusion Lab is um, located at Global Affairs Canada, so the Canadian Foreign Ministry. We are in the Office of Human Rights, Freedom and Inclusion. And so this gives a, a little bit um, um, of a hint that Canada is trying to position itself as a leader and investor on AI, but at the same time as a responsible stakeholder in terms of promoting human rights um, and uh, living up to the obligations and commitments that we have internationally. And so that's the biggest challenge that, uh, that we are trying to, um, to um, counter now. And in order to help us, we have a range of initiatives, including uh, with uh, graduate students, uh, to look at three areas in particular, uh, gender, um, hybrid threats, and um, the last one is um, governance of AI. So I will be happy to speak to you um, during the couple of days about these initiatives, if you like. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. And maybe let's uh, slide one down and look at some of the key dimensions or manifestations of inclusion that we think we should address. And so I was wondering, Ezequiel, Ezequiel Paceron from Faro Digital Argentina, also leading some of the Conectados al Sur efforts. I'm biased since we work a lot together. But I was wondering if any of these key dimensions maybe resonate with you or are related to some of the work we do or you do. Yes, uh, well, 
I, I can see the, the underserved communities. Well, well first, Ezequiel Paceron from Argentina. I'm representing Faro Digital and also our LATAM network that is called Conectados al Sur. And in Conectados, we work with youth, especially. And that's what we want to talk in this symposium. I think that we have a great challenge and great opportunities in order to include uh, youth voices when we are talking about tech and also of artificial intelligence. Um, in Conectados al Sur, we have three main pillars. That is the network building. We have also activities and also events on, or symposiums. Um, this year, we started some workshops with kids, with youth and, and artificial intelligence. We made them in seven countries. Uh, we started in Chile and in Costa Rica. And we are going to present all these results in our next symposium, and it's going to be in January in Costa Rica. So everybody that is interested in talking about youth and technology, just let us know. Uh, we are going to have a poster in the afternoon. So. We will be there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ezekiel. So Celia, I know you do a lot of super interesting wor work at the World Economic Forum, um, particularly looking at um, the economic impact of AI. And so I was wondering if maybe any of these dimensions resonate with you, or if you just wouldn't, would mind to share a little bit more about some of your work. Thing. Sure. Um, hi everyone, and uh, first of all, thank you very much to the organizers for putting together this fantastic symposium. Um, my name is Celia Baller. I'm an economist working on digital economy issues at the World Economic Forum. And let me maybe give you a couple of sentences of background of what we do at the World Economic Forum. Um, so the forum is a global platform that brings together leaders from the public and private sector and academia and civil society for dialogue and collaboration on a range of issues. Um, however, over the last couple of years, we've really focused all our attention and all our efforts to, um, to collectively shape this kind of convergence that we're seeing in terms of digital, biological, and physical technologies, or what our chairman calls the fourth industrial revolution. And one overarching objective of all these efforts is always to think about how we can shape these processes in a way that everybody is benefiting from it. Um, and how we can get this objective on the agenda of um, political leaders as well as CEOs. One initiative that I'm involved in personally is um, trying to contribute to a broader and deeper evidence base on the economic impact of digital and emerging technologies, including AI. Um, we, so we're building a network that has economics at the core, um, but we're also hoping to draw in lots of other disciplines um, to really um, kind of break up silos and help with the understanding, including technologists, um, but also governance experts, lawyers, all the way to the policy makers who will be implementing the policies. Um, we've just done a prioritization exercise in terms of what are the, you know, what's, what's top of um, people's minds when it comes to those economic issues. Um, of course, inclusion comes up, always comes up at the top, um, and in, like related to AI, we see specifically concerns about the impact on the labor force. So on the one hand, the within country inclusion aspects, um, but also the threat of the, of the manufacturing-led development model that might threaten global convergence. Um, but we're, I mean, so this is only as far as my work is concerned. We're taking a, a much broader lens, of course. We're not only looking at economics. We also have a work stream that considers how we can include values um, into the frameworks that we're building. Um, and uh, we have, uh, we, ha we, we just recently set up um, our San Francisco Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which is piloting and experimenting with new governance approaches um, in this Fourth Industrial Revolution era. So. And yeah, I look forward to, to discussing with all of you. Thank you, Celia. That's great. So I think that gives us a little bit of the example of what we have ahead of us. Uh, these are some great examples of initiatives and organizations that we have with, with us today. So we do encourage you uh, to meet as many people as you can. Uh, can we scroll down a little bit? Uh, so one of the things that I would like to uh, discuss and show to you right now is what are the, the things that you think uh, we should accomplish with this uh, symposium. And it's interesting because exploring opportunities for collaboration and uh, learning about AI from each other 
and about AI and inclusion is amongst uh, the most important topics that people answered that uh, we expect to achieve in the end of this event. So I think that's great because it looks like collaboration is a key value for everyone in the room. And actually, I would like to ask Fofgam, where are you? Um, Oh, there They're you are. They're actually sitting okay. all in order, my yeah, Swiss it's order. Yeah, it's, it's, that, that's what makes me <laughs> the, confused the, as exactly. Brazilian, you know? <laughs> that's why I'm kind of, wow. I try to put They're them like on one after the, the other. Like this. All over this the is place. so weird, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, so Wolfgang, you are one of the key people uh, regarding the organization of the network of centers. So I would like to hear your perspective on the issues we are discussing here. So. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much. Um, and the organization is so much Swiss style here that uh, this order does not surprise me. Uh, it's perfect. Uh, so I'm Wolfgang. I'm working with the Humboldt Institute for Internet and Society in Berlin. Um, and we just had the opportunity to have a um, workshop on these issues and to structure the bubble, uh, the European bubbles you could see a little more and creating a hub following the great example of our colleagues in Asia. Um, and so if Europeans are here in the room uh, representing centers, please don't hesitate to ask me how to uh, work together. Uh, one of the main outcomes, or maybe one atmospheric thing first, uh, this conference two weeks ago was uh, the conference with the best vibe, with the best energy I ever had uh, in the last years on AI. You could see that researchers were really eager to work together and to work on these issues. And I think to make use of this energy, and I feel it here as well, uh, is something we should uh, make use of. Um, when we talk about that. The second thing that came up at this conference was that when we talk about AI, it's very much about technology, of course, but it's much more. It's about designing decision-making procedures, for example. It's about narratives about technology and how we use it. And, and the pictures we have in mind, developers have in mind. Uh, it's about, and that's the, the participation thing that was here a minute ago, it's about deciding who should be sitting at the table, who is affected by that, who is actually a stakeholder that should be part of these multi-stakeholder procedures. And that is an uh, inclusion, whoop, inclusion issue. That's a two minutes uh, indicator, I think. No, I it's, promise uh, it's yeah. fun music. I promise it's fun music, not <laughs> okay. yet. Okay. Um, so that's one of the key things I would say that we uh, talk about uh, what kind of disciplinary cooperation do we need? What kind of uh, uh, knowledge production do we need from civil society, from NGOs, from the government, from the industry, from the academic field to um, uh, learn how to uh, shape the future in view of AI and make use of the opportunities. So that's uh, my view in two minutes. Thanks so much. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you so much. So I think with this, we wanted to actually include uh, Felipe Stefan from the Omedia Network into this session. Uh, but since he just arrived, maybe Felipe, if you don't mind joining us on stage and do a combination of what sparks uh, your interest out of this and address, uh, give your welcoming remarks. Uh, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you, Ronaldo, for doing this session with me. Alba, if you could maybe tweet uh, the link to this tool so people can use it and Elena can help us put it on the website. Uh, that would be great. Or Levin. Thank you. Felipe. Thanks a lot, Filippi. Thank you, good afternoon. I, I thought that by uh, arriving late, I would be left off the hook from providing my welcome remarks, but I'm, I must nonetheless bore you. Um, sorry, I'm finding my place here for just a second. Um, my, my name is Felipe Stefan, and I lead Omidyar Network's efforts in Latin America on the areas of uh, governance, citizen engagement, media, and perhaps most relevant for the conversation that we're having today, artificial intelligence. Um, and it is a special pleasure to welcome you to this event, uh, not only because we work so closely with so many of you, and in particular with the organizers, and if uh, you could please give a hand to the team that has put this together. They really deserve it. 
And special thanks for, to the ITS Rio team for giving us an excuse to come to Rio de Janeiro, which is always very much welcome. Um, but, but the other reason why this is a special pleasure for me is because an event of such global relevance is taking place um, here in my region and the region of many of you, uh, Latin America. And uh, that is particularly resonant for me uh, because in very many ways, Latin America and Rio de Janeiro is one of the examples of that, um, has for far too long suffered the negative effects of ex exclusion. Um, in Latin America, we have somewhat managed to be able to reside in a space in which we both move forward by developing cutting edge innovations while leaving very many behind. Um, it's uh, like walking on a tightrope. I don't know how we do it, but both at the cutting edge and uh, seemingly at times very far uh, summoned by uh, demons of the past. Um, unfortunately, that challenge, the uh, challenge of being able to both seize an opportunity when we see it and also ensuring that that opportunity uh, benefits not just those who are already empowered is a challenge that is special um, for Latin America. And the questions that bring us together for this event, I think are very much at the crux of that question that Latin America so often wrestles with. And so very many questions, as you see from the slides, emerge from the conversation that we ought to have in the time that we have together. Um, how will we ensure, for instance, that those uh, vulnerable populations are not considered edge cases, but instead are considered priority cases? How will we ensure that we work together to defend and define the public interest in changing times? How will we ensure that we are setting up ethical standards for questions that we either have never considered before or that we have to consider differently because of the times in which we now live in? Those questions are incredibly complex and I know that the people in the room understand that very well. And that's why their resolution innately must be collaborative. There is no way, no single organization uh, that can come up with the solutions for, for these questions and can implement those solutions. And uh, that is why I think it is so exciting that we have this space. It, because this space, uh, I think, is such a privilege for those of us who are working in these issues to explore ways in which we can collaborate, in which we can explore ways in which we can make progress in resolving some of these questions that are emerging, um, and in which we can set a clear path of action on how we will move forward. And on behalf of Omidia Network, I'm very excited to say that we very much look forward to supporting that collaborative action in making progress in an area that is so relevant to Latin America and so relevant all around the world. So thank you very much for being here and very much looking forward to the next several days. Thank you.